Oh, is anybody excited about the Lord Jesus tonight? Amen. Hallelujah. As we were in praise and worship tonight, I just kept hearing the Lord say, set your mind on things above. Set your mind on things above. Set your mind on things above, which must mean we've got our mind tonight on some things that are not above, which means tonight we must have our mind on some worldly affairs and concerns and things that are taking place. But the Lord keeps saying to focus on that which is above and not beneath. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. Tonight I'm, I'm going to start a, a series in the Lord, and we're going to see where the Lord ends up taking this, but it's going to be a series on getting our minds right in the Lord and beginning to see things through God's perspective and not ours. How many know that we need to see things as God sees things? Can I hear an amen? That's the heart of God for us, not to, for God to get in alignment for, with us, but for us to get in alignment with God. And so we're going to talk about some topics that are going to be, we're going to look at them God's way so that we can begin thinking and approaching things in, in his alignment, in his way, and in his will. Can we receive that tonight? So if you have the word with you tonight, let's go to Jeremiah chapter 17. Jeremiah chapter 17. How many love the prophet Jeremiah? Amen. Hallelujah, the weeping prophets. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 17 tonight, and we're going to start looking at verses 7 and 8, and we're going to talk tonight about the blessing of the Lord. I want us to begin to get our minds in alignment with God's truth regarding who we are. And one of the aspects in the Lord of who we are is we're blessed. Let me say that again, we're blessed. And how many know tonight that blessed isn't necessarily the amount that's in your wallet or the amount that's in your pocketbook or your bank account? Blessed is so much more than that. Can I hear an amen? The Lord said, I came that you may have life and have life abundantly or to the full. And we've talked about the fact that in the Greek and Aramaic, the Lord is using, utilizing the word zoe there completeness in your spirit your soul and in your body amen so being blessed is more than just finances it's every part of your life being in subjection to god being in surrender to god and being in the will of god are you willing to receive that and how many know if every area of your life is in that place then no matter what's going on around you, hallelujah, we don't have to worry, we don't have to fear, because we know that we're covered in the Lord. Do you receive that tonight? One of the ways that I can see the enemy trying to work in the lives of the people of God is in the area of fear. It's in the area of fear. How many know the word says tonight, fear not, for I am with you, amen? But if the enemy can cause us to focus on fear, we're not going to focus on God. Do you receive that tonight? And I know several even in this house, the enemy's tried to bring fear. He's tried to bring fear against me. Fear of the future, fear of the unknown, fear of what's going to happen in this body. But how many know that God's got it? Can I hear an amen? God's got it. So we are blessed tonight in the Lord. Somebody say, I'm blessed. Amen. So let's do this. When you get Jeremiah 17, 7 and 8, please stand up tonight. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 17, 7 and 8. So we're going to stand to honor the Word of God tonight in our initial reading of the Word. Please keep your Bible handy tonight. In this teaching, there's going to be several passages that we're going to take a look at. But I want you to notice what the Word says. But... Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. He will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in the year of drought and never fails to bear fruit can i hear an amen hallelujah please be seated tonight 
Hallelujah. What does Jeremiah say? He says we're blessed when we put our trust, when we put our confidence in the Lord. Can I hear an amen? But I want you to notice the contrast. How many know when the word says but? The Lord is contrasting something. Okay? So there's a contrast that's come prior to this. God's already talked about something. And then when he gets into the but, he's beginning to talk about us. So let's go to verse number 5. Jeremiah 17, 5. Notice what the word says. This is what the Lord says. Cursed is the one who puts his trust in man, who depends upon flesh for his strength, and whose heart turns away from the Lord. He will be like a bush in the wastelands. Now, I don't know about you, if I had the opportunity to be either like a bush or a tree. I think I'm going to take a tree any day of the week. How many know that the tree dwells in the higher place than the bush? And you are created for the high places in the Lord. Amen? So he says he's going to be like a bush in the wastelands. He's not going to see prosperity even when it comes. He will dwell in the parched places of the desert and in the salt land where nobody lives. But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose confidence is in him. So what is God laying out for us tonight? Two different mindsets. We're either going to trust in man or we're going to trust in God. We're either going to trust in man or we're going to trust in God. And based upon where we put our trust, that is what we're going to begin, or that is what's going to determine what we're going to look like. So the word says if we put our trust in man, we're going to look like a bush. <laughs> the word says if we put our trust in God, we're going to look like a tree. And notice what the word says when we put our trust in man, we're like a bush. How many know that a bush roots shallowly? A bush roots shallowly shallowly and by the way there's not many bushes out there that bear edible healthy fruit so we've got to see it for what it is and the Lord says when you trust in man you're cursed you're like a bush and even when the blessing comes you're not going to see it come on now but then the Lord says in contrast when we put our trust in him even in drought seasons we're blessed. Is anybody catching that? So what's it coming down to? What do we put our trust in? Now I mentioned a few moments ago that the enemy is trying to bring fear into the heart of God's people. How is he trying to do it? One of the number one ways he's doing it is by us putting our trust in man. So how do I know if I'm putting my trust in man? Well, what are you focusing your eyes on? Okay. I'm trusting in man when I've got to watch the financial news every day. I'm trusting in man when I've got to watch the world news every day. I'm trusting in man when I've got to know the status of the stock market every day. I'm trusting in man when I've got to know what the crime count is in my area on a daily basis. I'm trusting in man when I've got to look at what's around me and I've got to know what's going on all the time and what's going on around me. But how many know that's bush thinking, the word says? Come on now. That's having a lowered level of vision. And how many know if we keep looking at the things around us, we're going to get pretty discouraged? I don't know if you, if you have any money in the stock market, 401ks, anything like that. But if you do, guess what's going on in the stock market right now? A whole lot of negativity. So if I've got my trust in the stock market, I'm pretty depressed tonight. Even if God showed up, I'm depressed tonight. Why? Because I'm putting my trust in man. Is anybody catching this? What did David say in the Psalms? He said, don't put your trust in princes. We've got to see this. We've got to trust God no matter what because when we put our trust in God, even in seasons of drought, we're going to be blessed. That's the promise of God for us. Why is that the promise of God for us? Because we're his children. Can I hear an amen? Because we are his children. So what we want to begin to realize in the Lord tonight is that God desires to bless us. Do you believe that tonight? Poverty is not God's heart for you. Strap finances, 
not God's heart for you. God wants to bless you, but he's going to bless you when your trust is in him. Because when your trust is in him, he knows he can bless you and your trust is not going to shift to the blessing. Your trust is going to remain in him. Can I hear an amen? I heard a pastor say one time, if Jesus is your master, money is your servant. Let me say that again. If Jesus is your master, money is your servant. But again, when we're talking blessing, we're talking about the blessing of God in every area of your life. A divine covering in every area of your life where the favor of the Lord just moves and things seem to happen in every area and every aspect of your life. Are you hearing me tonight? That is a covenant right that you have. That is a covenant promise from God. But the thing is, if we want to see that covenant promise, we have to put our trust in the right place. What does Solomon say in the book of Proverbs? Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. He said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways, and he will make the crooked path straight before you. How many in here tonight and how many are listening tonight are looking at some crooked paths in your life? How many know if that's the case, God wants to straighten those places out? But they're only going to straighten out when we come into alignment with him. Alignment starts with trust. What you are putting your trust in brings an alignment. Come on now. So if you're putting your trust in man, you're aligned with man. God says you do that, even when my blessing comes, you're not going to see it. You're a bush, not a tree. You're not going to bear fruit. But the Lord says, when you align with me, then everything that comes forth from me is going to flow to you. And even when we're in a season of drought, you're going to bear fruit. Even when we're in difficult times, you're going to bear fruit. How many are willing to receive that? How many know that when God was going to send drought upon the Middle East, he spoke to Joseph? And he gave Joseph a dream. Why? Because Joseph was in alignment with God. Even in prison, even in captivity, he was in alignment with God. Which means alignment with God isn't based upon where you're living. Alignment with God is based upon how you're seeing, how you're trusting, how you're walking. He was in prison. Most folks would say, well, he's in prison. There's no way he's in alignment with God. No, he was right where God wanted him at that particular time. God gives him the dream about the fat cows and the sleek cows. And God gives him the download on what he needs to do so that there's going to be provision through the famine. Provision that's going to end up sustaining even the line of Christ. That's a picture for us. It's a picture of what? When we're in alignment with God... He's going to speak to us about what is coming, and he's going to bless us even in the midst of famine. How many are willing to receive that in the Lord? I find it very interesting that the Egyptians sold everything they had for grain and were in complete indebtedness to Pharaoh, where God's people, who were foreigners in the land, were given the best land, were given the grain, and did not go into indebtedness to Pharaoh. Is anybody catching this? What do we need to do? Keep our eyes on the Lord. What's going on in your life right now that is causing you to keep your eyes on the Lord? What's going on in your life right now that's trying to pull your eyes away from the Lord? We've got to set our minds and our sight on that which is above. Can I hear an amen? Does God want to bless you? Yes, that's a covenant promise. God wants to bless you. Can I hear an amen? Now let's go to Acts chapter 10 and verse 34. Acts chapter 10 and verse 34. Why does God want to bless you? He wants to bless you because you're his covenant partner. Somebody say, I'm God's covenant partner. In the word of God, the most powerful covenant was the blood covenant. The blood covenant could only be broken through death. We saw last Sunday that, mm, hallelujah, whew, felt the presence of God. 
We talked about last Sunday that death really is not cessation of life. Death is separation from God. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. So we are in a blood covenant in Jesus Christ. Are you willing to receive that? Because the most powerful covenant in the word of God is the blood covenant. Even the old covenant was a blood covenant. Well, how do you mean, Pastor? Well, in the old covenant, blood was shed. How was it shed? Well, it was through the sacrifice of lambs. But not only that, blood was also shed in a sign of the covenant, which was circumcision. Because in the circumcision, there was a small amount of blood that was shed. Circumcision was a sign of the covenant. Can I hear an amen? What did David say of Goliath? He basically said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? What was he really saying? Who is this man who's not under a covenant with a God? Who is this man? I am under blood covenant with Jehovah. Now Jesus fulfilled the God side of the new covenant and he fulfilled the man side of the new covenant. We've got to understand, God understood in the Old Covenant, man could never keep it. Amen? So with the New Covenant, which the book of Hebrews says is a superior covenant, the New Covenant is based upon superior promises and promises that will be fulfilled because what? Jesus fulfilled the man side of the covenant as the Son of Man, and he fulfilled the God side of the covenant as the Son of God. Is anybody catching it? He knew we could not hold our end of the old covenant. So he said, I'm going to make a new covenant and I'm going to fulfill both ends of it. Now that better get us excited tonight. Okay? That better get us excited tonight. One of the, one of the titles that Jesus used for himself more than any other title was Son of Man. Was Son of Man. As the son of man, he was going to fulfill the man's side of the covenant, which means every covenant promise is ours, not because of what we've done, but because of what Jesus has done. We've got to get in alignment with what Jesus has done. The old covenant was about what I did. Did I keep the laws? Did I keep the regulations? Did I eat the right foods? Did I have pork on resurrection sunday it right brother rob it all came down to what i did the new covenant isn't about what i've done it's about what jesus has done and that's what we've got to start putting in the face of the enemy every time he comes to accuse every time he comes to say you're this this and this and not this that's when we need to remind him that we are under covenant we're not a bush, we're a tree. We're under covenant with the one who fulfilled both sides of the covenant. So we're not who Satan says we are, we're who our God says we are. You're not even what your flesh says you are. You are who God says you are. He is your covenant partner. And he shed his blood so that you would never die. Now, wait a minute, Pastor, I thought we're all going to die. It's appointed for a man once to die, and then judgment. No, what I'm talking about is the second death, the real death, not cessation of life, but separation from God. Is anybody getting this? So as believers, we're assured we're never going to be separated from God. As believers, we're assured that all the new covenant rights are ours. The thing is, we've got to set our thoughts on what's above. We've got to begin to get our thought press process in alignment with the covenant. I really believe as New Testament believers, we're not as in tune with the new covenant as we should be. The Old Testament believers were. We've got to get in alignment with the new covenant and realize through the new covenant, everything we need has been provided. I want you to think about it. Now, Jesus is in his earthly ministry. They come to him and say, well, don't you and your disciples pay tax? Well, of course we pay tax. We render under Caesar what is Caesar's, render unto God what is God's. Well, why haven't you paid the temple tax? What did Jesus say? Well, no problem. Peter, go catch a fish. I mean, think about it. Peter, go catch a fish. What did Peter do? He went and he caught a fish. He opened up the fish's mouth and what was in it? 
financial blessing. So how many know that God is able to bless us financially in any means that he desires to? If Peter can catch a fish and has a gold coin in it, God can bless us any way that he desires to. But we've got to get our thinking in alignment with the fact that he desires to bless us. I think a lot of this goes back for many of us to our dad thinking. And that's the challenge we've got to break through, break through it in the Lord, is our dad thinking. How do many of us see God the way that we see our earthly dad? And how many here had an imperfect dad? I mean, I've got a dad who's absolutely amazing. At, at 80 years old, he's still pastoring full time. 80 years old. He speaks five times a week. I mean, I call him up, hey, Dad, let's have lunch. And it's like, well, son, I'm kind of busy. I'm like, Dad, you're 80. How are you this busy? You know, I, it's just what he loves to do. You know, it's what he loves to do. Here's the thing. I've got a dad that's amazing, but he still wasn't perfect. Much less anybody in the room that had a dad who wasn't saved. A dad who dealt with depression. A dad who dealt with addiction. A dad who didn't know who he was and found identity in all kinds of things. How many here don't, don't raise a hand? How many here are those, are those that are listening tonight via the web? How many here had a dad that you just couldn't please? <laughs> no matter what you did. I mean, you, you brought a report card home that had B's on it, all B's, and he looks at you and he says, well, you could have gotten A's. You know, you work hard and you bring home the report card, then the next semester it's all A's, and he said, well, you could have gotten A pluses. I mean, that dad that you could never seem to please. The way that you see your earthly dad and are even feeling about him right now as I'm talking about dads affects the way you see God. So when I start talking about God wants to bless you, if your daddy God image is not in the right place, that stronghold of thinking is going to battle you getting your thinking in alignment with the truth of the Word of God. So what do we need to do? Send the truth of the Word of God against that stronghold over and over and over again. Does God want to bless you? Sure he does. Well, what does the enemy say at that point? Well, where's the blessing of God on your life? Well, that's where we've got to get in alignment with the Word of God. Amen? With the thinking of God. With the processes of God. When it comes to being blessed. But it starts with us believing God wants to bless us. If you don't believe God wants to bless you, are you going to be blessed? No, it's going to be a self-fulfilling prophecy. You're going to get what you believe. How many are willing to receive that? You live out what you believe, whether you realize it or not. You live it out on a daily basis. That's why we've got to, got to set our minds on things above. We've got to get out of the earthly, bush-like thinking, and into the God Oak of righteousness type of thinking. Can I hear an amen? Now I want you to notice a beautiful passage here. Acts chapter 10, we're going to start in verse number 34. And this comes on the tail end of Peter ministering at Cornelius' household. Okay? And where there's a mighty move of the Holy Ghost in a Gentile's house. And Peter's absolutely blown away. Can I hear an amen? Here's some foundational thinking that we need to get. Acts chapter 10 and verse 34. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism. This needs to be a foundation of your thinking. God does not play favorites. Cindy, can you give us that verse, please, in the King James? This is foundational thinking scripture, folks. I want you to grab a hold of this tonight. God said this is a night of foundational teaching. Then Peter opened his mouth. Uh-oh. <laughs> That's a problem <laughs> when Peter opens his mouth. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Cindy, now give that to us in the Amplified, please. In the Amplified, the word says, And Peter opened his mouth and said, Most certainly and thoroughly I now perceive and understand that God shows no partiality and is no respecter of persons. 
So God doesn't see Benny Hinn here and see you here. God doesn't see Joyce Meyer here and sees you here. We've got to throw that mindset out the window. God is no respecter of persons. So when we see somebody that is saved and is being richly blessed, we should not look at that person and think, well, you know, God is just showing that person special favor. You know, this person must have done something that caught God's attention, so God is just specially blessing that person, and I kind of get the leftovers. No, the truth of God is God's not a respecter of persons. So if we will do what the word says we're supposed to do in that particular area, God wants to bless us as much as we're seeing that other person blessed. Whether it's our finance, whether it's our marriage, whether it's our children, come on, whether it's our job, whatever it may be, if we will get in alignment with the right thinking and the right doing in the Lord, God's going God's to make it happen. Can I hear an amen? Well, Pastor, I didn't think it was about my works. I didn't think it was about my doing. Come on now. Faith without works is dead. Okay? You look at my doing, and I'm doing because I'm walking in faith and what the Word says. Is anybody getting this? Faith without he- mm. Faith comes by what? Hearing. Hearing by what? The Word of God. Let's get our mind right with the Word of God in these areas, and the faith is going to increase. What is Jesus? He's the author and finisher of our faith. He's not the author and finisher of our fear. So what do we need to do? Let's get out of fear and confusion. That's of the enemy. Let's get in the faith and alignment in the Lord. If there's an area right now in your life that's not blessed, I'm going to challenge you with this. It's not in alignment. Okay? And that's not condemnation. That's realization. Okay? If there's an area of your life right now that's not blessed, it's not in alignment somehow with the Word of God. We've got to get it into alignment. Well, what do you mean, Pastor? Well, if you're here tonight and your finances are not being blessed, my first question is going to be, are you tithing? Because what's tithing? It's alignment with the Word of God. Because the Word of God says it. I don't believe that tithing is Old Covenant. I believe it's New Covenant. I really do in the Lord. The, the, the tithing of Malachi 3 in the Old Covenant is much like the hilarious giving that we see in the writings of Paul. We've got to see this for what it is. And my money in the New Covenant belongs as much to the Lord as anybody's money did in the Old Covenant. Is anybody getting this? So the areas where we're not seeing blessing, we've got to look to see, are we in alignment with God in that particular area? Does, does that make sense? Okay. So when we were kids, when I was growing up, we had a park in our neighborhood. And we go to that park. And in that park, they had this drinking fountain. And this drinking fountain was the type of drinking fountain where you pumped it. Does anybody remember those? That old pump style, and you learned real quick when you pumped it, don't let go of the handle and get your jaw on that thing if you're not watching. So we'd be playing at the park, having a good time. And by the time we were done playing and we're hot and thirsty, is a beeline for that old pump drinking fountain. And you'd pump that thing, and you'd pump that thing, and depending on who was pumping was going to depend upon the pressure of the water that you got. And if somebody didn't pump consistently, it kind of went... And if you are going to get any water from that thing, you had to get your mouth <laughs> in alignment with the flow. Once you got your mouth in alignment with the flow, you could get the water that you were thirsting for. We've got to get these areas of our lives in alignment with the flow. The flow's coming from the Word of God. We've got to get those things in alignment with the flow. Can I hear an amen? It's not a secret formula. It's not a God loves Rob more than me, so God's, God's blessing Rob more in this area. No, Rob's in alignment in that area. i got to get in alignment in that area. Well, Pastor, what's your scriptural basis for that? God's not a respecter of persons. He wants everybody to walk in Zoe. Can I hear an amen? Well, Pastor, I'm in agreement with it, but my husband's not. Well, get what's yours in agreement with what God's saying. And trust God for your husband to get there. Or vice versa. (laughs) Can I hear an amen? You act in faith believing that he's going to hear the word of God and faith's going to come by hearing. Amen. And things are going to happen. Can I hear an amen? 
So scriptural thinking is that God is not a respecter of persons. Now notice what the word says. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize that God does not show favoritism, but accepts men from every nation who fear him and do what is right. How many know if we're walking in faith and walking in alignment, we're walking in the fear of the Lord also, and we're doing what is right? What's doing what is right? Doing it God's way. He's the author. He's the finisher. We've got to get in alignment with him. He doesn't need to get in alignment with us. Let me say that again. Okay? I could have stood there all day in the old playground, okay, where I grew up trying to get that water and just held my mouth there, and the water's not going to get in alignment with my mouth. I got to get my mouth in alignment with the water, with the flow. Can I hear an amen? And all over the word, we see how to get the different areas of our life into the flow. Is anybody getting this? So don't start thinking, oh, this is a tithing message. No, this is a Zoe message. This is getting every year of our life in the shalom, in the Zoe, in the Lord. There's an area of your life that's not being blessed. It's not in alignment. We got to get it in alignment. Can I hear an amen? Well, pastor, you're kind of making it sound like it's all up to me. I thought it was all based upon G what Jesus did. Now hold on. Because that's more faulty thinking. New covenant thinking is this. Because of what Jesus did, I can now do what I'm supposed to do. Is anybody getting that? Because of what he did, now I can do what I'm supposed to do through what he did. He led the way we follow. Can I hear an amen? So we, we got to see this for what it is. And none of us can sit here and say, well, I don't have the ability to do this. No, we've all got grace. God's poured out grace on each and every one of us. So we've got the grace to do it in the Lord. We just have to choose to do it. We've got to get out of stubbornness and into alignment. So word of God on the, on the, the, the back wall on the bulletin board, God said, my alignment, my alignment, my alignment. What's God saying? Get in alignment with me this year. I mean, if we want to see things happen, get in alignment with the Word of God. Well, Pastor, I don't know how to get in that alignment. Start reading the Word of God. Do topical studies in an area that you want to see God move in your life, and then do what the Word says. God honors His Word. John chapter 1 and verse 1, Jesus is what? The Word of God made flesh. God honors His Word. When we do what his word says, he's obligated to honor that. As long as we do it in the right spirit. Is anybody catching that? Okay. What do you mean by that, Pastor? Well, if you're giving so that you can get all you can and can all you get, God knows the motives of your heart. But do you want to be blessed to be a blessing? Oh, that honors the Lord. Can I hear an amen? That honors the Lord. Hallelujah. We've got to see it for what it is. How many are getting excited in the Lord? Amen. So there's three things that are, I'm sorry, there's five things that we need to get our, our minds in alignment with regarding God if we're really going to understand the fact that God wants to bless us. Can I hear an amen? Five things we've got to get revelation in. For us to really realize that God desires to bless us. How many know that God's a good papa? He's a good dad. I mean, when my Hannah comes up to me and says, Dad, I want something. If I have it within my ability to give it to her, I'm going to give it to her. Amen? I'm going to give it to her. Why? I love her and she's mine. She's part of me. God sees us the same way. But here's the thing. God's resources are unlimited. Our God is not finite. He's infinite, infinite. Is anybody getting this? He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. You need healing, he's the healer. You need deliverance, he's the deliverer. You need blessing, he's the blesser. He's more than enough. Can I hear an amen? We've got to start thinking that God's on a limited budget. Well, you know, God's got all these people that he needs to bless. Come on, the streets of heaven are made of gold. 
Well, God's got all these people he needs to heal. Come on, there's a storage vault in heaven that has body parts in it that the angels are just ready to dispatch out to us. When our faith, come on now, when our faith is activated to believe that that's for us, let's get our mind on things above. Can I hear an amen? Okay, part of our problem is we're more familiar with the earth than we are the third heaven. We've got to start getting familiar with the third heaven and the way the third heaven works so we can begin to walk in the commerce of the third heaven and not this heaven, the first. Did anybody get that? It's important. You have been transferred out of one kingdom and into another, out of the kingdom of darkness and into the kingdom of light. We've got to start living like that and getting our mindset out of the old mindset of the old kingdom and into the new mindset of the new kingdom. The old kingdom was a kingdom of lack. The new kingdom is a kingdom of blessing. Is anybody getting this? Okay. Now this may seem foundational, but we've got to have a foundation if we're going to build anything. Okay. Foundational verse number one, God's not a respecter of persons. Acts 10, 34, therefore, every blessing that he has for everybody else, he has for me too. Okay. So five revelations we really need to get about God if we're really going to be blessed in the covenant. Amen. Number one, we've got to realize that God doesn't lie. God doesn't lie. We've got to get revelation of that. Did your earthly dad lie? Well, sometimes he didn't tell the truth. I mean, come on, let's be honest, folks. He was human. So what do we naturally think? Well, then God doesn't know is tell the truth. Maybe God fudges a little bit. Baloney. Baloney. God is not a man that he should lie. Pastor, where do you get that from? Numbers 23, 19. Numbers 23, 19. So I'm going to go to Numbers 23, 19, and, and I want you to see what the Word of God says. By the way, I find this fascinating that this passage is one of the oracles of Balaam. Balaam's being hired by Israel to go curse. I mean, he's being hired by a king to curse Israel as they come through the land. Balaam could do nothing but open his mouth and speak what God says. There's some powerful insight into who God is in, in Balaam's revelation. Can I hear an amen? Now notice what the Lord says in Numbers chapter 23. Hallelujah. In God good. Amen. In verse 19, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? Notice verse 20. I have received a command to bless. He has blessed and I cannot change it. Now I love the next verse, verse 21. Divination has no power over Jacob and witchcraft has no power over Israel. The Lord their God is with them. The shout of the king is among them. Do you know what Balaam basically said? I can't curse what God has blessed. I can't do it. I don't have the ability to do it. Because the blessing of God is stronger than the curse. I didn't get any amen there. The blessing is stronger than the curse. The blessing of God is stronger than the curse of the enemy. You've got to choose which you're going to walk in. What did Balaam utter? Not only did he utter God's not a man that he should lie, what he says he's going to do, he's going to do. He also says, by the way, divination has no power over Jacob. Witchcraft has no power over Israel. Who in this room, who listening tonight, is Jacob? It's Israel. We are. We're grafted into the vine. So here's a foundational truth we need to get. God's not a respecter of persons, Acts 10, 34. Here's another foundational truth we need to get. Deuteronomy 23, 19. God's not a man that he should lie. So that prophetic word that you got a decade ago that you haven't seen fulfilled yet, did God lie? No, then what's taking so long? He's getting you in alignment with it. 
He's getting you in alignment with the word so it can be fulfilled. It's going to be fulfilled when you get in alignment with it. You got to get your mouth in the flow of the water in order for this thing to happen. God's not slow in answering his promise. We're slow in getting in alignment many times. This is not a message of condemnation. It's a message of revelation. We, we've got to just see this for what it is. Be encouraged in this word tonight. Can I hear an amen? What's the second revelation that we need to get? Not only does God not lie, number two, the word of God is always true. The word of God is always true. I just heard the Holy Spirit say that there's some of us in this room and some of us listening in if we would begin to believe this truth, the healing that we need in our body would no longer be an issue. I just heard God say that. I'm only going to say what he's saying, amen? Now let's look at Psalm 119, verse 160. Notice what the Word of God says. All your words are true. And all of your righteous laws are eternal. <coughs> Do you know the word says, heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of God will endure forever. So not only does God not lie, his word is eternal truth. This is where the people that like to say, well, I just don't believe what the Bible says. That's where they're in trouble. Because when we stand before the Lord, we're not going to be judged based upon what we believe to be truth or not truth. We're going to be judged by the truth. And the truth is the word of God. So we, even the believer that says, well, I don't like what the Bible says about this particular area. So I'm just going to choose not to believe it. Well, you choose not to believe it all you want. <laughs> But the word of God is true, and the word of God is eternal, and we're not going to be judged by our own version of the truth. We're going to be judged by the truth. And how many know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life? He is the word of God made flesh. He is perfect. His judgments are true and righteous. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. So all these folks, well, I don't believe what the Bible says. Well, that's just fine. Go ahead, but the day is going to come when you stand before a righteous God and you're going to be judged by the truth of his word. That's why when the word of God says in the book of Romans chapter 1 that man continued to drift from God in sin, therefore God gave them over to a reprobate mind and out of reprobate mindedness came homosexuality. That is the truth because that's what the word of God says. Can I hear an amen? I mean, the word of God will defend itself on the day of judgment. The word of God defend it, defends itself every day in the universe, whether or not we want to realize it or not. Every single day. Can I hear an amen? So number one, God doesn't lie. Number two, God's word is always true. I mean, somebody's going to get healed in the room tonight if we're going to understand this. Number three, his love for you is never ending. These are foundational truths that are going to chase depression out of your life. These are foundational truths that are going to chase depression, oppression, poverty, death out of your life. Can I hear an amen? Tonight, through the word of God, we're declaring war on every weapon of the enemy that's been sent against us. My Bible says it's not going to prosper anyway, so it needs to let the facade down. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah, where you're preaching different tonight. Well, good. Hallelujah. That means God's getting a hold of me tonight. Receive it, amen. So let's go to Psalm 100, verse 5. Psalm 100, verse 5. I want you to notice what the Word of God says. For the Lord is good, and His love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations we got to stop saying, well, God did it this way back in Joshua's generation, but things have changed. He hadn't changed. 
He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the word says the Lord is good, his love endures forever, his faithfulness continues for all generations. Cindy, can you give that to us in the Amplified? You're going to love this. Can you give that to us in the Amplified, please? Hallelujah. For the Lord is good, his mercy and loving kindness are everlasting, his faithfulness and truth endure to all generations. Oh, somebody get excited in the room. Do you see how the word of God does not deny itself, does not contradict itself? It's all in agreement. And look at the attributes of God that we see in this one verse. The Lord is what? Good. The Lord is what? merciful the lord is what full of loving kindness the lord is what everlasting the lord is what faithful the lord is what truthful the lord is what eternal that's our god let's get out of the bush mindset because the bush mindset sees about this high The tree mindset sees up into the heavens and the true reality of who God is. Can I hear an amen? Oh, but they that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They'll mount upon wings as eagles. They'll run and not be weary and they'll walk and not faint. God said I quoted that verse because it's an encouragement to somebody in the room. Can I hear an amen? So number one, God doesn't lie. Number two, the word of God is always true. Number three, his love is never ending. Man, somebody's going to get saved if we're not careful tonight. Number four, God has a plan for your life. Your life is not just aimless, hopeless, wandering. God is good. Can I hear an amen? He's got a plan for your life. Well, Pastor, where do you get that? The ultimate youth group verse. Jeremiah 29.11. Amen. Cindy, can you show us Jeremiah 29.11, please, in the Amplified? Beautiful in the Amplified. I want you to see this. What's the Lord saying to us tonight? God's good, isn't he? Amen. Hallelujah. For I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Thoughts and plans for welfare and peace, not for evil, to give you hope in your final outcome. You know what the Lord's saying here? Your final outcome is going to be full of hope. What's the enemy try to say? Well, you're just going to be a crash and burn at the end of this thing. What's the truth of God? There's hope in your final outcome. What is that hope? Christ in you is the hope of glory. Your end is going to be filled with glory. You're going to finish the race. You're going to fight the fight. You're going to do it God's way. Can I hear an amen? You're going to be poured out like a drink offering. You're not just going to cross the finish line worn out, broke, busted up, beaten up dying you're gonna cross that finish line in victory christ in you is the hope of glory can i hear an amen so god doesn't lie god's word is always true his love is never ending god has a plan for your life transformational truth number five is this god wants to extravagantly bless you God wants to extravagantly bless you. Somebody say extravagant. Try to find a being more extravagant than our God. Do you remember when Isaiah saw God in the temple? I saw the Lord high and lifted up and his glory filled the temple. I mean, Isaiah struggled in human words to describe what he saw. What did he see? The extravagance of God. Right now, if we could go up to heaven and we could see the throne room of God, it's extravagant. How many believe that? I mean, what would we see? We'd see a throne like we couldn't describe with words. We'd see an emerald rainbow around that throne. 
We'd see the six-winged seraphim crying out, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Choirs singing, angels shouting, gold dust falling, gems all over the room. You won't find anybody as extravagant as our God. Can I hear an amen? I mean, we got to see this thing for what it is. And why do we think that our God, who is truly extravagant, wants to bless us in a paltry manner. Where do we get that from? My God's extravagant, yet he wants to just bless me, you know, enough to get by. That's wrong thinking. It's wrong thinking. Our God's extravagant, but I need to go have surgery. Now, wait a minute. He's an extravagant healer. He's an extravagant deliverer. He's an extravagant restorer. He's an extravagant blesser. Okay, anybody here in this room waiting for the one God has for you? He doesn't have some broken down, worn out, messed up person for you. He's got somebody extravagant for you. Do you believe it? Why would an extravagant God give a second best blessing? Now, if you're struggling with this word, I'm hitting some strongholds. Praise God. If you're struggling with this word, if your heart is going, yes, this is God speaking tonight, but your mind's going, whoa, I'm having a problem with this, good. God's getting somewhere. Amen? God will offend your mind to get to your heart. That's who he is. Now, I want you to see I mean, an amazing verse. Ephesians 3.20. Ephesians 3.20. I want you to notice what the Word of God says. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can think, ask, or imagine, according to his power that is at work in us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Now, Cindy, show that to us in the Amplified, please. You're going to love this. You're going to love this. Our God's an extravagant God. Now to him, by or in consequence of the action of his power that is at work within us, is able to carry out his purpose and super abundantly. Somebody say super abundantly. I don't even think that's a word, but I'll take it. I mean, is that not, that takes up half the screen. I mean, that's got to speak to us tonight. So notice what the word says, far over and above all that we dare ask or think, infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. Somebody get excited in the house of God. Super abundantly. It's not even hyphenated. Wow, what a word. I mean, what a word in the Lord. But that shows us God's intention towards us. And if we'd really get revelation of this, we would throw out the mindset, well, you know, if I don't really get my hopes up, then I won't be disappointed you know what Joyce Meyer would call that? Stinking thinking. And guess what you're going to get? Exactly what you're expecting. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Do you know what part of our problem is? We're receiving exactly what we're expecting. Our expectations are too low. We need to begin to have super expectations. Because when we start expecting to the level at which God will deliver, then God will begin to deliver what we're expecting. Now somebody needs to say, that's pretty cool. See, we've got to get it up to God's level. He may stoop down to make us great, but he's not going to bless us down to a level. That, I mean, come on, church. We've got to see this thing for what it is. 
We've got a God that's able to do super abundantly. I love what the word says. He can do infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, and dreams. Infinitely. And so many tonight are thinking, so many tonight are thinking, well, yeah, God blesses this person, but well, come on. <laughs> We've got to see that God loves to bless. And that blessing is not just money in your pocket. That blessing is health. That blessing is wholeness. That blessing is deliverance. Now, if the enemy's speaking to you and saying everything Pastor Zan is right, but there's something wrong with you, that's a lie. There's a whole lot more right with you than there is wrong with you. In Jesus' name. I'm going to say that again. There's a whole lot more right with you than there is wrong with you. In Jesus' name. Somebody give God the glory. Amen. Lord, we give you the glory tonight. Hallelujah. Let's get in alignment with what God is saying. Can I hear an amen? So those are the foundational truths that we need to get in alignment with. God's not a man that he should lie. God's word's always true. His love is never ending. God has a plan for your life. And God wants to extravagantly bless you. Now, between now and next Wednesday night, I want you to get every bit of that the reality of that truth in your life rooted in alignment with God. That's your homework. Well, Pastor, I've tried my whole life to get that rooted. Okay. <laughs> well, maybe you need to keep these five revelational truths on your, on your mirror in your bathroom so you see them every morning and speak them. Speak the verses that, that prove them. Come on now and speak those things every day over your life. Faith comes by hearing. Speak these truths out. And hearing by the word of God. Psychologists will tell you that the voice that's most believable to you is your own voice. Psychologists will tell you that. The voice that you, your own voice that God gave you is the most believable voice to your conscious, subconscious, and unconscious mind. Faith comes by hearing. Speak the word of God. There's a flow. There's a flow. There's a flow. The problem is we've had the wrong flow. Not the word of God, but the words of the other kingdom. We've got to get the flow right. Can I hear an amen? So, church, this is good preaching tonight. And it's not because it's me, it's God. I mean, this is stuff that's not even in the notes. God just keeps speaking tonight, and I'm just speaking what he's speaking. Amen? So enjoy this word tonight, and let's take this word, and let's keep it to heart. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. So, when we begin to walk in those foundational truths, we begin to realize that God's blessing on our life has nothing to do with the world economy. God's blessing on our life has nothing to do with the dollar's value on the market. God's blessing on our life has nothing to do with OPEC or the United Nations. There could be an absolute plague going on around us, and we're blessed. Just look at the children of Israel in the land of Goshen in Egypt. The plagues would be going on all around them, but in Goshen, they had peace, they had health. They had life. How many know that God wants us living in the land of Goshen? Well, Pastor, are you advocating that everything's going to be wonderful and God's going to give me a rose garden? Oh, no. There are going to be trial. There's going to be tribulation. There's going to be all kinds of things going on. But you're going to be blessed in the midst of it. Amen? How many know Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego found a blessing in a furnace that was supposed to kill them? I mean, in the midst of the furnace was supposed to kill them, number one, their bonds fell off and number two they met jesus there i mean talk about being blessed no matter what they do to you that's a picture of that can i hear an amen and that's how god does things amen what was the heart of those young men even if we perish in this furnace O king we're not going to bow down to your image he said oh yeah we'll throw you in well the real king showed up Nebuchadnezzar asked the three boys to come out. He didn't ask the real king to come out, did he? 
He said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, come here. He didn't want nothing to do with the one that, sound, that looked like the son of the gods. Can I hear an amen? So what's God really saying here? He can bless us so that no matter what happens, we're blessed, we're whole, we're healed. Can I hear an amen? You're in Ephesians right now. Just flip over to Philippians. Let's go to Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19. How many are enjoying the word tonight? Amen? What did Paul say? Paul said in Philippians 4.19, And my God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. So does God, ba does God meet your needs based upon the world's economy? Or does God meet your needs based upon his economy? Now, Cindy, can you give that to us in the Amplified, please? And my God will liberally supply, fill to the full, your every need according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Church, we serve the God of abundance. What did he say in the 23rd Psalm? I will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemy and your cup will overflow. Your enemies will have to watch you be blessed. He's not the God of the half full cup. He's the God of the overflowing cup. We've got to realize this. So as God's people, we shouldn't have to put a cup out to beg. We have the overflowing cup. And he's going to meet my needs according to whose riches? His riches. And his riches where? In this world? No, in glory. Which means what? He can transfer the riches of glory into this realm anytime he wants to. Do you know a blessing that Moses spoke over the tribe of Issachar? He spoke over the 12 tribes before he died just like the patriarch Jacob did one of the blessings that he spoke was over Issachar and he spoke over Issachar that they would be blessed with the wealth of the seas and the wealth of the sands isn't that interesting well what was so special about the wealth of the seas and the sands and so special about Issachar well Issachar was the tribe that was known to be scholars in the word of God you know what the Lord said to Issachar? Because you love my word, I'm going to give you not only the wealth of my word, but the wealth of the seas and of the sands. Now think about this. How much wealth is sitting at the bottom of the ocean? How much wealth is sitting in the bottom of the seas? I'd say an astounding amount. Who owns it? Well, the Lord says the silver is mine and the gold is mine. Who's God want to give it to? He wants to give the treasuries of the wicked over to the righteous. Let's follow the word of God to find the will of God. A plus B equals C here. So what does this mean? When we fall in love with the word of God, when we seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, then he adds all these things unto us. Well, pastor, prove that he gives the wealth of the seas and the sands to his people. Remember when Jesus needed that temple tax? And Peter caught a fish? Where do you think the fish got the gold from? I'm sure he got it from the ocean floor. The wealth of the seas and of the sands. Do you know at this very moment the Lord could have his angels bring wealth into this house from the third heaven? Could bring wealth into this house from a shipwreck out in the middle of the ocean and just bring it into us. See, we've got to begin to understand our God is the God of abundance, not lack. Somewhere along the lines, we got sold a bill of goods that poverty is somehow spiritual. These vows of poverty that priests and friars and other folks would take, I don't see that my God's a God of poverty. I see that he's a God of blessing. That he's not the God of barely getting by. He's the God of abundance. 
and that he wants to bless me to be a blessing. Amen? See, we've got to see this for what it is. Let's not turn this into a prosperity message. Let's turn this into a true understanding of what God's saying when it comes to what the blessing of God really is. Can I hear an amen? So what do we need to do? We need to begin to see things the way that God sees them through the eyes of his kingdom, not through the eyes of this earthly kingdom. Our God's got an inexhaustible supply of resources to meet your every need. And he didn't give it all away last night in a prayer service somewhere. So he doesn't have any left today. He has it for you. Can I hear an amen? So what we need to begin to do as God's people is let God change our mindset when it comes to blessing. Number one, to realize that Blessing isn't just money in your pocket. It's the whole picture. It's Zoe. It's blessed in every area of your life. Can I hear an amen? Then also, when it comes to finances, if I can talk just about finances for a moment, we've got to stop with this mindset that being blessed is dirty or earthly or fleshly. I mean, really, every blessing I have in my life has come from the Lord. I'm blessed to be a blessing. But we start talking about finances and economics and all that. We, we think that's something separate from God. Not at all. Not at all. That's spiritual. Finances are spiritual they're supernatural they're part of the kingdom let's stop separating this can i hear an amen i mean we do we separate it we think no no you know talk, talk about finances in church well he's either going to get cardinal with, carnal with it and go prosperity or he's going to tell people to open up their wallets and give everything no We're, we've been taught such extremes when it comes to the blessing Let's just teach the word. And the word says he's able to exceedingly abundantly above all that I can think or ask. He's the God of super abundance. Amen. And when I'm blessed, it's not just kind of an odd aspect of God, who God is. It's as much of an aspect of God as anything else that God does. Can I hear an amen? I mean, money's not evil. It's the love of money. That's evil. That's why the Lord says, you seek first my kingdom, my righteousness, and I'm going to take care of everything. I got it. I got it. You're going to be blessed. In fact, Deuteronomy 28 says, you're going to be blessed in the city. You're going to be blessed in the country. You're going to be blessed as you come in. You're going to be blessed as you go out. You're going to lend to many. You're going to borrow from no one. You know what the Lord really says? I really believe it's the heart of God when it comes to finances, that we be extravagant givers because our God is an extravagant giver to us and that we're blessed to the point that we don't have to go to the money changers when we need anything. We go to him. That we function out of abundance, not lack. When you go to a bank, you become a servant to that bank isn't that what the word says? The borrower is servant to the lender. Wait a minute. My Bible says that I'm a servant of God. And I can't serve two masters. Is anybody catching this? See, I believe God wants to bless us so much that we don't need the money lenders. And he wants to bless us with such abundance that we can lend to many and have to borrow from no one. Why? Because he doesn't want his children owing anything to the gods of this world, to the lenders of this world. Is anybody getting this? I'm starting to get this, and I'm starting to understand this. But when you really start to get this and understand this, you realize this. The 10% that you give in tithe on a Sunday morning, that's not all the money that belongs to the Lord. A hundred percent of your money belongs to the Lord. 
not just the 10% of tithe. So if God says, I want you to give 20% today, you give 20%. If God says, I want you to sow this in Israel, you sow it in Israel. Why? It's not our finance, it's his. Is anybody getting this? So we've got to realize our life is not our own. How do we begin to be blessed extravagantly? Let's get into alignment. Seek first his kingdom, his righteousness, and then believe all these things are added unto us. But I'm blessed to be a blessing. Can I hear an amen? I mean, God just blessed Rob with a new vehicle. Hallelujah. Rob needed it. I've watched Rob drive around with a multitude of vehicles, you know, for years. And one would break down and the other one would start running. And then another one would break down and the other one would start running. He never knew what car he was going to drive to church. I mean, I, I think Rob kind of liked that, by the way. There was an undercover aspect of that that Rob kind of liked. But I watched Rob kind of struggle with, should I really invest in this? Sure he should. God's going to supply all his needs. Amen? And I'm believing the next time that Rob buys a vehicle, he's just going to buy it outright because he's going to be so blessed. You know, is there trial and tribulation going on in the midst? Sure there is. We talked about a Sunday after service, didn't we, Rob? But our God is the God of superabundance. Amen? And my earthly, let me say this now, my earthly mindset needs to be overridden by heavenly truth. Amen? And no matter what's being said in the earthly realm, what God is proclaiming from his throne is what's going to stand because the word of God is eternal. It's everlasting. And he's not a man that he should lie. Could I hear an amen? We've got to see this. So do you believe this? Do you believe this? World economics or God economics? We've got to see this for what it is. Amen? Couple more passages. Let's go to Exodus 9, verse 29. How many are in love with the Lord? Amen? Start decreeing it. The last two vehicles that uh, Holly and I purchased, God blessed us to purchase them outright with no loan. I'm not saying that to say I'm something. I'm saying that to say God keeps his word. I was talking to Cindy about it, and I just quoted the word. I said, Cindy, we lend to many, but borrow from no one. Cindy said to me, she said, you know what, Pastor? I'm starting to get that, starting to understand that. I'm going to decree the word of God. Amen? Hallelujah. Isn't God good? Let me say this again. Isn't God good? Amen. I just, I just, I love the way God says, God says things and God does things. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's do this. Let's go instead to, to 2 Corinthians 9 11. If I go into Exodus, I'm going to preach all night. <laughs> and I'm tempted to. So <laughs> we're going to 2 Corinthians. Start talking about Moses and what God was doing. And we'll just, we'll just go and go. All right. And this Wednesday night, right? Now, I want you to see something, and, and let's go to, to again to uh, 2 Corinthians 9. Let's start in verse 6. Well, Pastor, I thought we were going to talk about money. You know what? Well, you can apply this to any area of your life. Can I hear an amen? Remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each man should give what he's decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a what? She'll forgive her. Tell me that tithing is not new covenant. And God is able to make all grace abound to you so that in all things and at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Can I hear an amen? Amen. As it is written, this is Psalm 112, verse 9. He has scattered abroad his gifts to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. 
Now notice verse 11. You will be made rich in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Cindy, can you give us 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 11, please, in the Amplified? I want you to see this. Thus, you will be enriched in all things. In how many things? That's Zoe. That's prosperity, according to the word of God. Blessed in all things. Blessed in the city. Blessed in the country. Blessed as I come in. Blessed as I go out. The enemy comes against me one way. He flees seven different ways. I lend to many. I borrow from no one. Everyone who sees me sees I'm blessed of the Lord. Is anybody getting this? How many know in the world, if dad's rich, son is going to be rich? It's in the family line. But with God, it's in the family line. Can I hear an amen? Now. Thus you will be enriched in, uh, enriched in all things and in every way so that you can be generous and your generosity as it is administered by us will bring forth thanksgiving to God. So in what areas does God want to bless your life? All areas, all things, but with a purpose so you can be generous with it and use it for the kingdom. We've got to have the right perspective. If Jesus is your master, money will be your servant. Is anybody getting this? God loves a cheerful giver. That word comes out of the Greek and Aramaic, hilarious. That's where we get our word hilarious. I mean, God tells us to give. We're just laughing and rejoicing. Why? Because we know he's the God of abundance. Can I hear an amen? But that sowing isn't just money. We sow in prayer. We sow in helping people. We sow in being there for people. I mean, we sow in a lot of different ways, folks. I've got people in my life that sow prophetically into my life. I praise God for those folks. Amen? And those folks that sow into my life with prayer. So we apply that to prayer. If we're willing to sow prayer for other people, then we're going to have other people sow in prayer for our life. Amen? I mean, we've got to see this for what it is. We've got to get in alignment with God. Amen? Don't make this a message about money. <laughs> This is a message about getting our thinking right, getting our actions right, getting an alignment so that in all things and in every way we can have everything that God desires to give us so we can pour it out for the sake of his kingdom. How many here want to be blessed to be a blessing? Let's get in alignment with the word of God. How many here have areas in your life that don't seem to be blessed? Let's get them in alignment with the Word of God. Amen? What I'd like for you to do between now and next Wednesday night is take those five revelationary truths, read over them every day, and the Scripture that comes with them, speak it over your life. And let's see if in just one week some things begin to change in you. See, I make that challenge knowing this, the Word of God does not return void. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good, isn't he? Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. Let's just put up a hand towards the Lord right now. Put up both if you dare. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, I thank you tonight that in you we're a kingdom people. Lord, I thank you tonight that we are to have kingdom mindsets. Not the kingdom of this world, but the kingdom of heaven. So, Lord, I ask tonight as our hands are lifted up to you, and, Lord, as we look up to you, God, may we begin to think on things that are above. God, may we begin to get every area of our lives in alignment with your truth, with your word. 
God, may we begin to believe that you're not a man, that you should lie, that your word is eternal, that your love is eternal. God, that you want to bless us. God, may we get in alignment with your truth. And God, may you tear down everything that's against that alignment that's in our lives, our thoughts, our strongholds, our thought processes. Lord, tonight we receive the word that you poured out over this house. Lord, I pray may this word not be contained in this house, but may it go over Ustream and YouTube and touch and bless people's lives. Lord, bless us to be a blessing. Lord, you know that this body right now needs financial blessing. This church needs financial blessing. Lord, we ask the one who is super abundance, you, Lord, to meet our financial needs. Lord, there's people in this body that need jobs. Lord, we ask that the right jobs would open up. Lord, there's people in this body that need healing. We declare that you're the healer, and by your 39 stripes, we're healed. Lord, there's people in this body that need deliverance. Lord, you are the deliverer. May your delivering power be released. Lord Jesus, I thank you tonight that you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could think or ask. Lord, may this word tonight take root within us. May it root deeply below and may it bear fruit above. And Lord, may we not be a bush. May we be a tree planted by the springs of living water that bears its fruit in due season and doesn't have to fear in times of drought because its roots go deep in the living water and its precious leaf doesn't wither. Lord, I ask this week as we study these five revolutionary truths and revolu revelationary truths and the word, the passages that go with them, God, I pray, may you tear down strongholds in everything that stands against the word of God. And may we come into alignment with your holy fountain in every area of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. For there's no other name under heaven given to men by which they can be saved but the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Now tonight, whether you're in the house or you're listening by Ustream or YouTube, I just bless you in Jesus' name. I declare, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord turn his countenance towards you and fill you with shalom peace. Nothing missing, nothing broken. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.